Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in, much appreciated. And today I'm gonna to give you guys a peek into my secret fall time jerkbait box, specifically my early fall jerkbait box because um, you know I use jerkbaits 12 months out of the year and I've got specific ones I use for different conditions, different times of the year. So I'm gonna give you guys a peek into my early fall jerkbait box, show you my favorite ones, favorite colors, and give you a few tips on that. So. Real quick, just wanted to remind everybody, um, just wanted to uh, make that weekly reminder. If you guys are interested on in going on any on the water lessons with me, uh, just shoot me a message on my private, on my uh, Facebook page, uh, Randy Block, a professional angler. Shoot me a private message there and I can give you all the information on that. I do private instructional lessons on all the area lakes here, Table Rock, Stockton Lake, all that type of stuff. So, okay, anyway, here we go. I'm gonna show you the box. I'm gonna go through it and uh, see what you guys think about this. Okay, guys, I got Elliot in the boat with me here. Gonna show you the box here. This is my early to mid fall jerkbait box. This is the Mega Bass 110 plus one junior box. This is my favorite jerkbait to use uh, September, October. And I'm gonna explain to you different, uh, some different reasons why here. First of all, um, it's the size of the bait. You know, the 110 plus one junior, it's uh, quite a bit smaller than the regular 110 plus one. Um, they make just a regular uh, 110 plus one with a little bit shallower lip on it. I, I like the 110 plus one simply because it's a little bit more uh, versatile. I can, I can control the depth on it a lot, uh, you know, easier with my rod position and line size, but I like the, uh, the bigger lip on it because it gives me a diversity. So I'm gonna go through my colors here. First of all, I'll show you, show you what I use uh, based upon um, different sky conditions and different water visibility colors here. So here's a general rule. Here, here's some of my favorite colors right here. And I don't wanna get caught up into the specific color name, but I wanna talk about more of the finishes on the side. Now, for example, this one right here, um, this is a metallic finish. Uh, this is a purge pattern here, but it's a metallic finish. You can see the shine on there like that, called a GG finish in the Mega Bass Lime. And the times that I like this metallic finish are um, basically windy days, bright days with uh, water visibilities anywhere between like three to eight foot. And this is a really good color to use on windy days if the sun's out. There's something about the flash of the metallic side that works really good. So that's my choice under those conditions. The next one, is a, the flat finish like this. This is the Table Rock Shad. And this is a really good color to use if it's cloudy or windy or raining or nasty. The, you'll find that the flat finishes work really good early in the morning or on those cloudy, windy, rainy days. Uh, just seem to get a lot more bites on them. So that's what I use in those conditions. That looks like the Joker, that, that one. The what? The, the one that you just showed me, that looks like the Joker. The Joker, really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, the next one I'm gonna talk about is a more of a shad type pattern. You know, this is a straight shad pattern. This is the uh, stain reaction. Uh, translucent sides a little bit, a little bit, uh, you know, colored belly, you know, you know, light colored side. This is a real good versatile bait in all the different conditions. I catch a lot of fish on this. Wide range of conditions, uh, two to 10 foot visibility. It works on bright days, cloudy days. Um, it's sort of my workhorse as far as, you know, it's something that works all around the situation. Um, next one I'll talk about is the more translucent finishes, you know, like the Pro Blue here. Um, See-through finish, translucent. This is a really good color in tough conditions. If you don't have much wind, bright skies, clear water, times when the bass are a little bit more finicky, um, this is the color choice I have here. And then, you know, I'll have just the more of the... Uh, just the mixed prism looking, sort of half prism, half clear. Um, this is also good in clear water, bright conditions like that. So that's just a basic color uh, choice. So now we'll talk a little bit about when and how to fish them and where. Okay, so let's talk a little about where you wanna fish these things and how you wanna fish them in the early fall. Um, a lot of people don't fish jerk baits in the early fall. They sort of think it's more of a colder water bait, which it gets gradually better as the water gets colder. But I start using it pretty heavily in September and October in a couple different conditions. First of all, this 110 plus one junior, it's one of the favorite uh, baits that I like to throw around boat docks in September and October. You've got a lot of fish that are suspended around docks. 
marina docks, sea walls, break walls, that type of stuff in September and October. It's a really good way to catch them there. You know, I'll just take, I use all these on spinning rods. So I'll just take eight pound test, Seaguar and Vizex, uh, make long cast parallel those docks, uh, work it pretty fast uh, down the sides of them. And that's another thing about fishing these jerk baits in the early to uh, mid fall time of the year. I don't hesitate them much. I keep them moving pretty fast. Um, I'm trying to get a reaction strike. The water is still quite, is still pretty warm. It's, you know, like right here in, in Missouri, we're still in the 80s. So I'm not going to hesitate this bait. I'm going to keep it moving at a pretty fast clip, trying to get a reaction strike out of it. Second to docks is windy shallow points. Um, any days that I get that you have like a 20, 25 mile an hour super hard wind, um, I run as many secondary and main lake points as I possibly can in a day, fishing shallow. I, I'm actually throwing this bait, you know, real close to the bank, uh, trying to keep it a long cast from the bank, as far as keeping my boat a long cast from the bank to where I can hit the bank. And I'm covering that, you know, that three to 10 foot water on those secondary and main lake points. Again, the advantage of having the 110 plus one lip is that if I want to start it out shallow on the point i keep my rod tip high you know use a little bit heavier line um, and gradually as the bait gets deeper i can adjust my rod angle to get it down into that five foot zone or so most of the time you're going to find on those points um, that it's going to be you know those fish are going to be five feet and sort of in that zone and the last pattern that i look for you know in this type of deal is i like to get back in the coves in the middle of the coves particularly on lakes that have any type of submerged or standing timber, like a Lake Lanier, again, some of the Ozark lakes here. Uh, I call them sort of guts, and these type of areas are really good also in the pre-spawn, but one of the things you'll find out in the fall time of the year and in the early to mid-fall is there's a group of bass that will suspend in the middle of those coves sometimes, and I like to get my boat like in 15 to 20 foot of water, fan cast all around about two thirds of the way back into cove to all the way back in the cove. Um, you're starting to have more shad move back into these areas this time of year. Um, a lot of those bass are roaming. They're coming up and hitting, you know, chasing shad on the surface and they'll go back down. But just basically covering water in the back of those coves in the middle of them is a really good way. So anyway, guys, give it a try. Get you some of these 110 plus one juniors. They got them at Bait Works here in Springfield, Missouri. I'll include the link in the description here. Um, put them on eight pound test line, spin and rod, work them pretty fast and hard. Um, just around whatever shallow cover you have. Those are the three things I like to fish them in. You know, it's around docks, shallow points, and middle of coves, but you may have grass in your lake. You may have pilings. You may have some, you know, a little bit more of a diversity in cover, but it will work. Fish them fast, fish them hard, um, and keep doing that until that water temperature starts to, glow, to get below 70 degrees. So anyway, I hope it helps you keep up, keep up. Hope it helps you catch a few more fish, and uh, we'll check in with you guys later on. Like, uh, subscribe. Okay, see you later. Thanks.